What is going on guys, Joey here, and this is just a different setting. There's nothing nothing crazy going on um, other than I just thought I'd switch it up, try something a little bit different, and talk to you guys about just on my normal video topics, but I'm just gonna do it on camera. Uh, I just wanna get back into the swing of things, how I used to do them way back in the day. Um, thinking about the early days when I used to sit in my room in like 2016 and just record off of my phone or whatever, literally whatever I had. Um, and yeah, just kind of get back in the swing of that being on camera more. I feel that for those of you that don't know me, this is probably the first time, this is the most you've seen me sit down and talk in front of a camera, uh, which is kind of crazy. We're here now and I don't know if I'm gonna edit this. I might edit it slightly here and there. But uh, yeah, just to sit down and talk to the people. Uh, where are we at right now? What is it? When is it? We are, uh, I have a couple local meets coming up the uh, next week and then next month. And then uh, right after that, we're gonna be, you know, it's gonna be Sheffield time. And that's pretty much all I'm focused on. That is the number one thing um, that I'm putting, like just a lot of like my mental energy into. And of course, you know, just all the other things that go on uh, behind the scenes over here in Flexland. And, uh, you know, as I'm going through my day, doing whatever it is that I need to do, we're observing the internet, we're seeing things, and I have a couple topics that I wanna talk about. Um, maybe both in one video, maybe just one in this video, I'm not sure. I just said, you know what, I'm turning the camera on, I'm gonna start talking. First uh, thing I wanted to talk about was uh, I saw this post by I don't know I don't know the person's names I don't know the page but the basic premise was that uh, this this person was essentially saying that the gains that these uh, college football players that go to UFC were making UFC USC were making here in Southern California um, down that way are just like not possible and there's something suspect going on and they're probably on steroids, whatever, right? So when I saw that, I looked at the pictures of before and after um, and how much muscle they put on and I'm like, you know what? It just sound, it just looks like uh, somebody who's been training for like a couple years, maybe three or four years, and then they really start taking their weight training seriously. They really start focusing on their nutrition, um, sleep, they're very regimented, they're very consistent. I mean, after all, when you're a college football player at a big school like that, I mean, that's gonna be your life. That's what most of your energy is gonna go into. And I didn't see anything, like yes, they're making good progress, uh, probably from this point forward. So if you were to take uh, you know, a year or two or however long the before and after was, and then you were to do that again, it I could almost guarantee that it's not gonna be the same like, you know, raw, the, the same amount of muscle they put on, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna be like cut in half, maybe 30%, maybe 20% of that, right? That's just how it works. I think people, they, especially in powerlifting and bodybuilding, they, they're just not exposed to like what it truly means to be like genetically gifted. Of course, in powerlifting we have like, especially now, I would say now more than ever and literally every single year you can keep saying that. There's gonna be someone who sort of breaks out where they're very, very young and they're just way ahead of everyone or they get it together whenever they get it together. Um, they finally get uh, their training correct, their food correct, things like that, and then they just like take off, and we see, um, you know, them surpassing what had previously only done well enhanced, right? And it just goes to show like how, uh, I guess, how our community of powerlifting is so made up of people that. Um, maybe attempted to get into those higher, get it, get to a higher level um, in those big time sports like football, basketball, things like that. The sports where uh, physicality, less basketball, but the sports where physicality um, is like a tremendous benefit where someone, if they're big, shredded, fast, you know, all of those types of things, um, the average person is gonna look at that and be like, I mean, it's usually one or two train of thoughts. Wow, that's amazing. That person really hard, worked really hard or, oh, that guy's got to be on something, right? And I think in our sport, um, anybody can do it, right? Anybody can powerlift. Anybody can do get into bodybuilding. 
anybody can look at people that are doing things the right way with good genetics. After all, if you're competing, if you're like at uh, USC playing football, you're going to be, you are going to have some kind of advantage uh, inherently over the next person because that is like the top of the top of the top. A large percentage of those players go to the NFL um, every year. I mean, I don't think it's changed from the last couple of years. It's, you know, usually everybody starting gets picked up um, or like 90% of them, something like that. So, you know, especially in the NFL, you are going to see guys that don't try and they're like taking powerlifting records, right? They literally don't try. They just do it in the off season and they're just that good, right? And they're going to be fast and their bodies are just going to have a low body fat set point. Um, for me growing up, uh, I realized, I, I don't know why I'm like this. It's, I just never really was somebody that looked at other people and was like, oh damn, that person's got to be cheating because they're better than me. I guess I was just always like, all right at sports. Uh, I used, I got ahead in different ways. And I think in high school, you know, it, especially with the talent pool that we had at my high school, you could pretty, you could work really hard. And you could get ahead. You could start. You could you could do some damage. You could be impactful, especially in our league. You could definitely do those things. Whereas, um, in these like bigger high schools where football is like their main thing, like the I think the players just like mature uh, a lot sooner. They get to their like grown man strength like a lot sooner. They're also they're just like better, right? They're just better at that. They actually recruit at those schools. Um, and I think I just kind of realized early on that like I can make a difference like with my mind and I can give good effort and I can hustle. Um, but I'm not, later when I got into college, um, I started to, I'll never forget this one guy on the team. Um, I don't think he actually, he only played a couple games with us, but I think he had grade problems. And, uh, but I just remember him being like just a physical specimen. This guy was like 6'4". Uh, 22 inch arms, maybe 23 inch arms, um, shredded, he, massive arms, massive legs, like just a beast of a person, right? And he was the nicest guy ever. Um, I for oddly, I remember uh, like very random interactions that we used to have. I remember when he got like he drove over a pothole. I remember his what kind of car he had, and I remember ha having that conversation with him. I remember having lunch, and just like helping him out in practice and things like that. But I learned like, especially at that level that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at what I'm good at, but there's just people that are, I mean, that was, that made it very evident to me that there's going to be people that are just like, they're just made for something, right? They're just like better at, at certain things are, and that's totally fine. And I, and I think for me, I found early on that I could probably, how can I like make an impact in the world, right? Like how can I make a difference? I think helping those people, um, I mean, right now we, we literally have like everything you can think of on the team. Like we have beginner of the beginner. I was just talking to one of my girls the other day. She's like a super beginner. She's even post, um, but people don't see those lifters, right? They just see like the ones that, um, are like super, you know, not like you need to be gifted and you need to work hard to be the best at anything and you need to do things right. But people don't see, um, like now I'm kind of transitioning into to flex. Uh, they don't see like the beginner lifter that puts, goes from a thousand pound total to a 1500 pound total, which is like amazing. That's like a dream, right? That's what I want to do with everybody. I want everybody to make those kind of gains. Um, they see the person who was already good at with a 1700 pound total that trained over the years and got a 2000 pound total, right? Um, they see the people that break out into the top one, 0.1%, right? And I guess what I'm trying to say is um, when I was in college, I realized that there are just going to be people that are at that. They're just going to be better at something. And for me, myself personally, I can make a difference in the world helping those people. Even my first early meets, I remember competing. I remember um, being in the flight with, his name was Lucian, and there was another guy. Um, I remember his last name, I don't remember his first name, but I just remember like being in, in back in the, like the USPA days, right? There was no, I don't even know if US, APL existed back then. 
um, I just remember like I was I finished lifting and I could tell that like my competitor was like having trouble uh, like kind of with their deadlifts and I'm just like bro like if you take this number like you win like don't even you know don't even this don't even that like bro you got the dub just like hit it and we became friends after that and I just started to I didn't even try to push coaching I just did it for fun and then um, I was a personal trainer and then I just got better at lifting you know any of you guys right now I'm sure a ton of you guys can do this I literally have like I know sub juniors I could do this if you go to a commercial gym, you go to 24 hour fitness, you go to LA fitness, you go to wherever and you load 495 pounds on the bar and you hit that for a set of five, people are going to look at you. People are going to be like, they're going to talk to you. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to want to know how you did that. And it's for us, it's like normal, right? We're just training. We're just, well, no, just going through my normal progressions hitting the deload once in a while, make sure my protein's on point, not overthinking it. You know and and you're kind of good to go so um, when you do things right you get to a point where even somebody like myself who I mean genetically I have good legs uh, my legs are not something I have to work really hard for they just come naturally um, I just gotta I don't even need to push them hard I just need to like feel the weight in my legs when I'm doing the workout and get a little bit of bar slow down, right? Maybe a little bit of burn action, and that's it. And they're gonna grow, and that's just how my how those go. But for the biceps, though, the little tiny biceps, it's like I could hit them. I actually don't hit them uh, because my my time investment to like what I get out is like not very good. I do hit them indirectly all the time. I would say I probably hit them like once a week, but I should be hitting them like three times a week without fail. Um, you know, probably if I wanted to get them grow, probably even four times a week. Uh, not even joking, like eventually five times a week if I wanted to really, really, really see a difference in my arms. Um, but like, I guess in my own body, in my own self, like I have an example of working for something very minimally. I mean, obviously I was able to build a big squat, right? Um, a squat that I never even thought could be possible. I never even thought it could be possible. I literally, when I started lifting, uh, I think I squatted 474 at my first meet. Um, and then to eventually like move up in weight classes and like be able to hit 750, it's just like, now it's like a normal thing. It totally makes sense to me. It's not even like crazy. It's like, yeah, I mean, if you, I, you gotta stay healthy for like nine years, right? That's how long it took me. It took me, um, 2013, I started specifically powerlifting. I was squatting way before that though. So if you wanna count that too, I mean, I was squatting in high school um, all the way up until I was like 29, uh, 30 even um, so 2020 to be able to do that um, so it took a really long time you gotta stay healthy gotta be kind of like made for it uh, in some cases and yeah I mean you can you can work really really hard you could build something that's like special uh, I was not the best uh, I believe the highest I ever got was like top six um, of all the 120s uh, in the nation and Knowing what I know now, I'm very confident that I could probably have done those numbers at 105. I'm also very confident that if I would have stayed 120, I would have hit way into the, I probably could have hit like low 800s, mid 800s by now. Um, and then like COVID happened and then my body fell apart and maybe one day I'll come here, sit down like this and talk to you guys about that. But yeah, um, that was a lot of story time. I just really wanted to kind of say that in our sport of powerlifting, you know, a lot of kids haven't, they haven't done like real sports first, so they just come in here, this is their first sport. So they're not really exposed to like people that are like super far and away from the norm and they all, people like like to accuse uh, that people are cheating and things like that. And what's so crazy about this is now, just now in 2024, I think kids are, because the talent and power thing is so good that kids are starting to believe that the sky truly is the limit. Um, and they're starting to like understand like oh, okay there's people that are not only like like their starting point is like way like i hope like if i do everything right i might end where they just started right but that shouldn't deter you from participating and in my opinion that shouldn't deter you from giving it your all because 
the cool thing about this is you never know. You literally don't know. We don't know. Um, I have so many examples of some of my best lifters on the team that when we first started together, we didn't have expectations or we had no idea where we were going to be at and we just kept working and then we were able to read something like super like unimaginable, right? Like, wow, like how can I, how can I do that? And then over time you start to have a pattern. Uh, one of my lifters, Reagan, the other day said, I want to, I want to go like in the footsteps of like Alba and Cali. Um, and I thought that was really, that was really amazing for, to hear that because they were both uh, you know, junior lifters, they go to their nationals, they do really good at junior worlds or worlds, and then they get into Sheffield, and he is like now following that same sort of like trajectory uh, to try to get there. Obviously, it's gonna be super hard, it's actually gonna be harder than ever, um, but we're gonna give it everything, and I think you gotta have the belief, you gotta have the right system, you gotta take care of things outside of the gym, and you have to have a little bit of luck sometimes, and a little bit of uh, maybe you need to be like slightly gifted, right? Maybe you're not just like great out the gate, but you have potential to grow, you know, farther than you ever thought. So, um, I guess the moral of the story is, um, don't get discouraged, keep training, try to find a way that you can be impactful and just, uh, I'll leave you guys with this. Well, one, if you enjoyed this kind of video, please let me know as uh, if, if you do, if you find if you found it somewhat entertaining, I can get on here and do a couple more like this. Um, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. But I'll leave you guys with this. If, and this goes, you know, goes with the theme of kind of the, the landscape right now. If you are not passionate about something, um, you could try to fake it, but you will always lose to someone who is truly, truly passionate about it. You will literally get your ass handed to you by someone who's passionate about it. Uh, literally anything in life, uh, business, um, yeah, you could tie it into anything. So if you made it this far, hashtag real one for sure in the comments down below because I was just rambling for 20 minutes. Um, if you're able to take something away from this, let me know. Uh, it was just kind of like an opportunity for me to come talk to you guys um, in a different setting. If there's anything you want me to cover, uh, please let me know. I feel like it would be fun to, I will, I will be doing some like history, uh, flex history, because I feel like we've done um, a lot of amazing things. I'm just looking at some of the medals uh, over the years that we have over here and just some of the banners and things. And it's just like, man, that was like an amazing time. Uh, and I would love to share some of that with you guys. Um, we added a new page for the workshops. So if instead of me just saying, hey, we're gonna do a workshop, it's just gonna be there and people can drop their email whenever and whenever it hits like a number, I'll just do another one, literally. Um, it's only like a couple dozen that I could do uh, anyway. So um, that's gonna be up. It, there's a full explanation on what the workshops are on there. Uh, yeah. I mean, look at the description of the video for all the other little things. I'll see you guys in the next 